So this is uh, Monday, Labor Day actually, and we're laboring. Uh, today, <clears throat> uh, Scott and Jason have really gotten into the governor and the rack and uh, tried to get it to function the way that it's supposed to happen. On these buses, there's a button that you can push and it's supposed to choke the, the fuel off on the bus and that's what shuts it down and it wasn't working and they've been going through everything and they found uh, some Texas creative mechanicism going on there so they have rebuilt that and uh, now they have the ability to get it dialed in a little bit better we took a look at the uh, reverse solenoid today which is this little thing that sits on top of the transmission and uh, it's an actuator. It's like a magneto that just pops out and pulls the uh, bus into reverse. <clears throat> they tested it with power and decided uh, because, uh, you know, when they charged it, it's supposed to pop out. It's not. And so as a result, um, we think this is uh, bad and will need to be replaced. But we did test it thoroughly. <clears throat> I'm working on draining the main air tanks, which is not a heavy technical thing, but uh, it's within my abilities. So I'm going to drain those out, and I've got those, uh, these little things. <coughs> these are, uh, so they're, they're a drain with a cord on it. You can pull the cord, and it drains it, and then the cord snaps back, so that you don't have to go crawl under the bus to do that. Um, other things that we need to get done today on our list... The parking brake is actually, if you come up here and look, the parking brake is actually a big handle, and you pull that handle up, and it is supposed to engage a, a round brake in the back by the transmission, and it just holds the, the transmission from turning, which thus stops you from rolling around when you park. We're having some trouble with it. It seems like it's not completely engaging, and so... I'll probably try to clean it up and oil it a little bit, and if it needs like some mechanical repair, those two are much better prone to that. So I'm sticking to things that are more maintenance things. They're actually capable of rebuilding it. And that's how it's been along the way. We also have uh, our <clears throat> air compressor set to go in the 20 pound air jack underneath. We're gonna lift the whole front up of the bus and we're going to check kingpins and get them greased. We're going to look at the steering. And Jason was uh, complaining yesterday that it was pulling. It was difficult to pull. So we're just going to go through the whole front end and do an inspection and see if there's any problems going on up there. Beyond that, some of the other problems that we were running into driving across the country that was creating this type of action, if you can see the grease all over everything, we had a lot of leaks that popped up, and a couple of them that we went through and addressed are on the other side. They're working over there, but you see that little port? It's like a little door in the red in the frame right there. So the other one, we built gaskets for it, but the gaskets actually sucked in and then spewed oil all over. There are also these ports on the actual head, these little holes. That's, those are just screws, but... There are ports that sort of look like that. Some of those were leaking, and they were dripping oil all over everywhere. And then the governor itself, <clears throat> which starts with what I thought would be like the throttle, uh, like the throttle body, but that's actually part of the governor up here. If you go down to the bottom, you can see there's an oil line right there, and uh, it's leaking underneath there and dripping oil all over. You can see it on the tailpipe down there. So, when you heat it up and run it for 10 hours at temperature, all kinds of things start falling apart. We've noticed that there's a lot of JB Weld on the bus in various places. And over time, the JB Weld fails. So eventually, the goal would be to go through with like brazing or something like that, basically have it professionally welded, repaired. And so that's something that's on the list of things that bring it perfect. We did replace the starter, or Jason did yesterday, and it's a different size starter, but we made it work. 
And uh, so we're getting a lot of good things done. The, the best news of all is uh, Scott's been firing it up and watching what happens. And he doesn't think the engine is uh, kaput and it needs to be, uh, a, you know, an in-frame or anything like that. It, it's starting up. It's not smoking very bad. He even is suggesting that uh, one of the cylinders, because it was a cylinder where the valve was open for 20 years, the exhaust valve, is maybe a little rusty and over time that will clean up and I may get even less smoke than I have right now. So nothing wrong with uh, a bus that self-heals uh, some of the more expensive problems. So anyway, we're going to keep at it. So we finally killed Jason. He's, uh, he's dead. We're going to bury him. It's about 4 o'clock on Monday, uh, the day we started uh, with a fairly simple list of things to do. Um, we still got to put the diff, fill the diff up. I got to crawl under and do that. But that's an easy one. So, found a couple things. Um, I put new air valves in. That's what I managed to accomplish today besides running for parts all day. So now we can easily drain our tanks, which you're supposed to be doing. So the governor on this engine... <clears throat> And Bus Grease Monkey will probably show it in a video more comprehensively. But this whole apparatus right here that connects to the fuel rail, the rack on the, on the, uh, the valve rack, um, is not either getting to full, it, it's full throttle or it won't shut off. And we've just decided that the parts inside are so loose or so old and worn out that we're going to probably have to replace the governor. And so that's going to be another thing to fix. We also went through and started dealing with uh, some steering things that we noticed when we were uh, working earlier. And one of the things that we discovered is that they put the back of the hub and the back of the brake drum the hub kind of mounts in it using flat head screws and uh and when we pulled it off they had put some hex bolts in it and the bolts were actually hitting the uh hitting the assembly as the wheel was spinning so it would kind of like lock up and it would give you this really bad uh sensation when you're driving so that wasn't too safe we did grind it down we did fix it there is a seal that just keeps water and mud out that uh, we could not put back in. It was fouled. Um, we have ordered it. We're going to put it in in a, in a couple days. It doesn't impede your ability to drive, but over time, if mud and dirt start getting into your bearings, obviously that's not good. But So we can drive it for a few days, and we'll put that part back in once we get to Traverse City because um, it's not a big deal. The shocks on the bus are shot, which, you know, 74-year-old shocks... Um, and those, uh, there's one place that rebuilds those. So that's another project I'll probably do later this fall. I don't mind a slightly bumpy ride to just drive it around for a while. But, uh, you know, once we get into maintenance mode, that's another thing. And uh, I don't know. We're going to fill up the diff. Uh, we did seal up some water leaks. We did fill up some uh, air leaks that we ended up having on the bus. Um, uh, and the oil, uh, the valve cover that we had is the old style, and we don't have uh, we don't have the right gasket, or the gasket's kind of failed. So I happen to have a new style sitting in the bus. So we put that on, and it had a little bit of a hole in it. We patched, but um, for the most part, that should alleviate any oil shooting out of there. And then we replace this gasket on this. Uh, Right there, you can see the new gasket. We stuck it out a little further, and we used some uh, sealant to make sure it does not leak anymore. It's not as pretty as it was before. So, Jason is signing the uh, the patch on the on the thing, the Texas Bus Rescue. We'll go back with permanent paint. Uh, we couldn't find a paint gun in, in town, but uh, we'll... We'll permanently put that on there as a memento. So all in all, you know, like everything on this, oh yeah, we'll just spend an hour adjusting this. That took, what, six hours? Something like that. So, you know, that's that's kind of how this bus is going. And, and Scott, I think, learned 
what we've been knowing, which is that nothing is uh, very perfect. But, you know, uh, it's, boy, it sounds good now, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, it's not blowing smoke. Um, Scott thinks that the engine is actually really good and healthy. Uh, we just have to fix the governor. Um, and that's, boy, that's a relief because, you know, a rebuild is $5,000 or so. So we're going to go grab lunch. We're, you know, after lunch. And uh, we're going to get some, some other things punched out. And we'll uh, keep going. I was hoping to leave this afternoon, but I didn't really have too great an expectation that we'd get out of here. All right. So we were able to make it to the top of Scott's Hill with one small problem. Right in the center of the route and over here it's a little bit to the right. Right here it's in the center. Ah! So basically this extends all the way down the hill, uh, about halfway down the hill. So now we've got to figure out, this is clearly oil, and uh, it's a lot of it. I mean, when it's all said and done, it's probably a quarter gallon to a half a gallon of oil. And we don't know what caused it, because if it was the blower tube, it'd be over here. Slobber veil's right in the middle, so it'd be in the middle, like right there. We don't know why it shifted from the left side to the right side, but it left a lot of oil. And so we really want to figure out what this is. So now we're going to test out the brakes. We just did a lot of work to them and we really haven't used them a whole lot. So we figured this would be a good way to see if the brakes are working. I let Jason drive. We asked Scott if he wanted to ride and he said no thanks. He'd rather videotape the bus going down the hill. We've decided that this is uh, brake clean. We cleaned the engine off and the brake clean pulled up behind the block and it, it came out. It's not thick as regular oil. So. We gonna have him back in? Yeah, you wanna help him back up a little yep. bit? All right, so it's Tuesday, and we're leaving the bus grease monkey, and he's just given us our marching orders. Uh, but they did, uh, he and uh, Jason today uh, took it out and ran it around. Where'd you guys go? Just went into town, around the block. Around the block, you went up the hill again. Yeah. So he's now summited the hill twice, and not as much smoke, no big oil. They were so nice, they cleaned the motor for me. I'm a bit of a guy who kind of likes to keep things nice and clean. So that was exciting that they did that for us. And uh, so we'll see. It'll be pretty obvious with as clean as this engine is where the oil leaks are if we have any. And uh, hopefully we won't anymore. But uh, I think we're ready to go. Did all kinds of stuff today, but I guess it's time to head to Indiana. <laughs> 